All right, mm-hmm. so the audience is dying to hear the story, Tim, and I've heard it and I want to hear it again. How in the world do you journey? How in the world do you go from flipping single family houses one at a time to owning on my lands, $350 million in real estate portfolio with over 4,000 units in a short period of time. <laughs> yeah, rel- relatively short. You know, I've been in, been in real estate since 2005, started investing in 2009, bought my first apartment building in 2012. And uh, it was the bottom of the market, you know, but I realized a few things when I started looking at apartments and buying apartments. Um, you know, I came from the flipping business and I wasn't a very good flipper. I was okay. I found some good deals because the market was so cheap, but you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't have the attention to detail. I didn't have the, um, I didn't like that. It wasn't, um, it could be like automated or standardized as well as maybe investment property could be, you know, with my investment properties, I have standard finishes. And when I got into flipping houses, the, I didn't like the, the holding costs and the carrying costs and not being able to cover those, um, and having to come out of pocket every single month, if the property sold, uh, great. If it didn't sell, I was always stressed out when I was flipping like the retail style houses. Then I started flipping some like uh, rental properties, kind of turnkey rentals. And I'd fix a property up, put a good tenant in place, put management in place, and then sell that as a as a stable rental property. And if it didn't sell, I didn't care because I still had the cash flow coming in. So it gave me some some sense of relief and really uh, removed a lot of the stress from the real estate investing business. And then when I did sell it, I made the same percentage return as I did when I was selling like retail flips. Um, uh, and then when you add in the cash flow and, and all that other stuff, actually my returns were a little bigger. So then when I got my first apartment building in 2012, I realized not only was it like a turnkey single family rental property, but it had the scale that my ambitions and that my goals uh surrounded. So I really like the apartment buildings because all of a sudden I could go and flip one apartment building and it was equal to eight houses. My first apartment was an eight unit building, but I only had, you know, I can go to one house or I'm sorry, one apartment building or eight houses. I can look at one foundation or eight foundations, one roof or eight roofs, meet the contractor at one location or eight locations, have pay one tax bill, one utility bill, one water bill, or eight water bills, eight tax bills. So you see like there's so many different levels of, um, of scale in getting into apartments. It was actually easier for me to do, like I was flipping probably 80 to 100 houses a year when I was flipping the turnkey stuff. Um, I mean, I have 4,000 doors, oh, over 4,000 doors today, and it's really only like 65 apartment buildings. Like you and I know a lot of guys in the masterminds that we're in who are flipping three or 400 houses a year, and that's way more transactions than I do. I do 15, you know, transactions, 20 transactions a year. Um, and so I, I, I don't, I think it's working a little bit smarter than working harder. I know some other people who work way harder than I do. Um, but I just have more units and, you know, I just have more zeros added on. And I think that's a big differentiator, uh, for a lot of the levels of success that I've seen is, um, it's not how smart you are, right? It's not your level of education. It's not if you, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth or come from a family with a bunch of capital and cash and who's already doing real estate. It's how big do you think, right? Like the level of your size of your thinking is directly proportionate to the size of your success. I'm a blue collar kid from Cleveland, Ohio. My dad was a cop. My mom was a stay at home mom. And, um, you know, I just had big ambitions and I found an asset class that really could scale. And I thought big and I thought, Hey, what's the worst thing that could happen? I move back in with my parents or, you know, move in with a buddy or figure something else out or, you know, go to zero. Not that I ever want to go bankrupt and not that I would ever be, uh, you know, reckless with my money or, or other people's money or with any of the investments that I ever did. But I'm, I, I just conceptually, I think about you can go really big and the sky's the limit or worst case scenario, you hit, you hit ground zero, like, go back to zero, but at least there's a floor to it. You know, at least there's a stop, you know, somewhere there. And uh, although I never want to go there, the opportunity, the upside opportunity versus the downside risk just far outweighed it. And so I just started thinking bigger and I just didn't let fear get in the way. And I found opportunities to invest in these apartment buildings. And so um, I structured it in a way that was very attractive to my investors, uh, made it attractive for me being able to build up some equity. And then I just, you know, 
you, you do what you say you're going to do and all of a sudden things start compounding and this this momentum kicks in and um, people want to do more business with you brokers bring more deals to you and uh, people want to reinvest their capital with you and so just you know kind of hit the snowball Thank mm-hmm. you.